Panther Nation podcast. Yeah. Let's go. Uh. Yeah. Oh, cut it. Cut right. And I would like to introduce one of the hottest podcasts in Carolina history. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Stop, let's check. We got time to chop it up. Uh-huh. Talking analytics and fantasy draft. You know what's up. Panther Nation representing. Because this is where we talk that. Talk that's so incredible. Make them rewind that talk back. Pause. Talking Panthers football, we discussing it all. On and off the field, you know exactly who to call. You know we the number one podcast. Competition is non-existent, you need to stop that. Pause. It's an honor to be a Panther fan. Pause. At Bank of America, that is where we ball. Coming to the jungle, then you gonna feel the pause. Winning the trophy for the city, it is a call. Black and white and blue, we going Carolina strong. And this is the conversation where everyone belongs. Discussing all the numbers and topics, you know we got it. We the hottest podcast and we popping. Let's go. QueenCityPodcastNetwork.com Yo, 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 what's cracking, Panther Nation? It's your boy Rashad. It's Dave in the building. It's PNP. And it's, boy, it's a lot to talk about today, Dave. It's a lot. Oh, I know. It's a lot to talk about. And, boy, you got a fitting shirt on. We're going to talk about that, that, too. There's a reason for the season, I, my I, man. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Dave, I know you was busy this weekend. So I before was. we get into all the content, Dave, talk about the weekend. Let's talk about it. A lot to talk about. I went to my first, I got to make sure I get the terminology right. I went to my first new member presentation on the campus of North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University since they've changed the format. And I will say, guys, y'all need to change it back. Going through that joint on, on, on Friday was a war of attrition. And I ended up leaving. Like, I, I only went wanted to see my niece cross. And they were fourth on the list out of five. That's a war of attrition, guys. War of attrition. And um, my daughter finally got, my daughter got to get a tour of A&T. Campus tour, which was pretty dope. Uh, shout out to the, shout out to the, um, the tour guys. That was fun. Um, and I, I did my first in-person tournament in North Carolina in 20 years while I was down there too. So it was a pretty the good question. Weekend. The question is, you're not victory lapping. So you must've got smacked, Dave. Nah, I mean, better than the, the last couple online tournaments I was in. I went one into in, in Tekken, which is shocking and went into in Street Fighter six, but I lost to the guy that won the tournament. So I can't, I can't feel bad about that, particularly in Street Fighter. Um, you know. I played under night and birth. I knew what was going to happen there. There was only three of us in the tournament round robin. I went on two, but you know it was fine. You know, shout out to my shout out to my man Brandon. He he shout out to Brandon. He's doing a phenomenal job cultivating that fighting game community in the in the city of Greensboro. So shout out to him. It's a lot of work as somebody who did it when as a college student. It's a lot. It is a lot, and he's got a pretty tight knit community there. So that's dope. Yeah, Brandon, good peoples, man. Shout out to Brandon. Um, yeah, what else, Dave? You got all the safe travels, all that stuff. Did you ever, did you ever find out how your basketball team did, Dave? No. <laughs> no. Dave. Oh, no, no. I didn't even talk to you about the whole travel situation, man. Now, what I, like, if you watched MD last night on, HB, on the HBC Nightly Network, you would have known that, I, that I'm going to recommend that nobody ever fry Breeze Airways. I didn't yeah, get home dude, until... I could have told you that. Dog, we had dog. that conversation when you was at the crib. The, I told you, bro, I've never heard of him in my life. No, Ever. but you know what? You know what's the irony of it all, is it right? So, like, I knew I was in trouble. I knew it was going to be an issue when I got to Providence to fly out to Raleigh. When I showed up and they were like, nah, we ain't going to take your bags. We don't take your bags till two hours before. That was the first warning sign. But then the flight went out of hitch. I made it to Raleigh on time. It was great. And then it became, then the return flight happened. I was on like a 9 p.m. flight flying home on sunday 9 p.m turned to 11 30 11 30 turned into 1 30 a.m and 1 30 a.m turned into cancel and moved to 145 the following day and my That's daughter had crazy, 
Yo, yo, dog. My daughter had um, driving lessons on Monday afternoon. I couldn't risk her missing. She was already going to miss another day of school because of this. I couldn't afford to miss. I ended up paying for my own paying flight, playing Delta, so we can get home. But I had to fly out. Of, I had to fly to Boston, so I had to fly to Boston, then take the train to TF Green Airport in Providence, then get my car and go and drop her off at the crib. And then I ended up turning back around, and went to work that day. I got I got to work around like 12, 12 30, something like that. It was bad, man. Like. I, you know, and the thing is, so they gonna they're gonna refund me for my return flight, but I for for Vine and Vibes, I plan on flying. I plan, I I have a flight to Breeze for that, so I'm trying to figure out a way to get my money hope, back. You hope to get that, but boy, I ain't never heard of Breeze in my life, Dave. Well, it's funny because Josh uh, from HBC Nightly, man, I, he was like, you know what, man, Breeze wasn't bad. He was like, when he went to L.A. for the UCLA game, that's how he flew. <laughs> Bro, there's I had never heard of Breeze in my life. <laughs> it was a nonstop flight too from Raleigh to L.A. It was nonstop. So I mean, but you know, you gotta take your hits. You gotta take your you gotta take your good with the bad. But I won't be I won't be utilizing them anymore. And it's funny, the and it, and it gets even better. So right now I'm trying to set up a tour with Hampton University for for my daughter. And so I said, all right, should I fly? Should I drive? Or should I take the train? So driving is like almost 11 hours. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to drive that. So that's out. So then I said, all right, cool. I think I'll let's check the flights. First flight that pops up, hundred dollars round trip, Breeze Airways to Norfolk, Virginia. And I'm like, can't do it. Can't do it. My daughter, my daughter has slandered Breeze Airways since the fiasco that happened on Sunday. Luckily, I have family. I have family in Raleigh. So I was able, they picked me up, took me to the airport the following morning. But yeah, yeah, that was long winded. But you know, sometimes you got to do that. Shout out to Keith Bostic. He says, I forgot to tell you guys, I'll be attending the North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in the fall. Congratulations, sir, and welcome to the greatest HBCU on God's Green Planet. Uh, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you, man. What's your major, uh, Keith? What's your major, Keith? Shout out to Keith. Shout out to the Aggies in the building. Aggie Pride. One time for the Aggies. One time for the Aggies, hey, man. Hey, Keith, if, you, if, you're in, if you're comp side, bro, you need to apply for my scholarship. I should be giving out money soon. Hey, it's a plug. That's a plug <laughs> right there. Hey, it, it, it ain't about what you know. It's all about who you know. Who you know. Shout out to Keith, though. What? Yeah, we didn't know your major, though, man. Real, real talk. All right. So um, for me, not, nothing much this weekend. Real chill, relaxed weekend. I was chilling. Uh, all good. Uh, you know. Um, so that was pretty much it for me. I didn't. I didn't do much. So mass communications at this moment. Shout out to you, man. It's a good, good department good up place. there. We, we graduate more. We graduate more journalism majors than any other school in the country. So any other yeah, black good. journalism major than any other school in the country. So good place to be. Good, good spot. Good spot. All right, uh, Dave, let's go ahead and get to it. We got a lot to talk about, man. 355 people in the building. 10 minutes in. Shout out to y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. Let's go ahead and get into this. A lot to talk about, Dave. A lot to discuss. But first... You always gotta know, stay on the prowl, man. Always stay on the prowl. A lot of a lot of a lot of nastiness out here. Make sure you stay on the prowl, all right? <laughs> Dave, I, Panther I only... Twitter's been light work compared to HBCU bro. Twitter this week, bro. bro. And dog, the wildest things I've seen for the past couple of days, you know. So I threw this up here because uh I you had said you didn't want to talk about it. So I, <laughs> I put this up here on purpose. But Dave Russell Wilson got released by the Denver Broncos. What are your thoughts on this, Dave? What are your thoughts? And I gotta ask, I gotta ask, Panthers. I'm glad he got his money. No, moving on. <laughs> I mean, come like, on, like, Dave. Like, come on, like, listen. And you know what the funny thing about this whole situation with Russell Wilson? The contract that he signed, the extension that he signed, it didn't kick in yet. It didn't kick in yet. He was still on the original deal. So, you know, you know, $85 million. And man, he mile. got paid. Yo, he got Dog, paid, he, man. Yo, the cap hits is going to be astronomical for Denver. They got to take a $39 million cap hit this year and like a $45 million cap hit next year. But, but Dave, doing the, cap, first. the cap doesn't exist. The cap doesn't exist. Yeah, so. but when you make a big mistake like this, then it's bad. It's about, but but what happens with the Panthers is that they're making a bunch of little mistakes. And we're going to talk about what the heck they're doing right now. We are. They are they are letting go of the world. But I guarantee you, as bad as we're doing right, as, as much as we're letting people go, it ain't equating to $85 million. Yeah. 
dog. Yeah, it ain't that's, 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 <laughs> that's the like a you you can't you can't make mistakes like that. And I get it. Here's the thing, like that that regime didn't bring in Russell Wilson. So again, we always say on the show, new coaches, they're gonna bring in their guys, and it obviously it didn't work out. Um, well, I, and so I, go ahead. I, I'm always I'm fascinated by what the deal was when it came to Sean Payton, right? Because Sean Payton yep. probably initially had an intention to work with Russ. And I of think course. Maybe, so he wouldn't have took the job if that's yeah, the case, I don't think still. he would have took the job if Russ wasn't there. So for him to go ahead and be like, nah, he ain't it. That says a lot, man. I just remember, man. A lot of Panther fans wanted him. Well, I remember. I, I, I take Ru- Russ is a good quarterback. No, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Russ is a good quarterback. I'm not saying I want him here. That's not what I'm saying. Because as soon as I say he's a good quarterback, that automatically equates yep, that I want him exactly what that means. That's not what I'm saying. I, I think Russ is a good quarterback, bro. He's a good quarterback. That system, it didn't work. They tried to square peg round hole it. it. It wasn't working. It did not work. Russ needs to be free. Like, you can't just, put Russ in the system like that. He needs I, to be free, bro. I just think there's a reason why Seattle decided that Geno Smith was a better option at the time. Like, I, I, I you know, like, it ain't like too much change, right? Pete yeah. Carroll was the coach at that point. So, from my perspective, I think there's a reason why they thought they could move on and roll with Geno Smith at the time. I don't think that was a coincidence. Oh, by the way, we didn't even talk about the amount of draft capital that they gave up to get this man. Mm-hmm. They gave up two first round picks and like a second, I think. They gave up a lot to get this man. They did. So, they did. You know. So, but yeah, yeah, it's a cluster, bro. Ugly. Cluster out there in Denver. But that's what happens. That Russ was a game happens. changer at the beginning of his career. Um, you, don't, you don't think he was a changer? He's more of a manager? I think he always had a lot around him, bro. He always had that good. So he was defense. a manager. So he was a manager. He had a good defense. He always had the run game, had good weapons around him. I again when you go into tiers, when you go to tiers of game manager, like Cam said, he's a top tier game manager. He's a top tier game manager, bro. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, no, there's nothing not. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, bro. But do you think he's still a top tier game manager now? I think he could be in the right system and the right weapons around him. He's proved it. I'm fascinated to see no, what a square I, peg round hole with Denver and the and, and Russell Wilson. It didn't work because twice. they didn't put him in the best position to succeed. Right. Twice. Exactly. Exactly. So it so, it's, that's not on him, bro. It's they it's it's a bad situation. We'll see what happens. I'm fascinated to know where he ends up. I'm fascinated yeah, to know he, where he ends up. He's gonna have a market. I mean, there's gonna be a market for Russ. I I mean you can talk up talk about what you want. With Russ, bro, he's a good quarterback, bro. And in the right place, I I trust him more than I. Tr- There's a, a lot of quarterbacks. I trust I trust Russ over uh over Baker. I trust much. Russ over a couple. I mean, but still, I'm, but what I'm saying is, there's there is going to be a market for him. Bro. That's oh, all. We'll I'm see. Saying. We're gonna see. I'm I, I'm looking forward to see how it goes. But let's move on. We've already exceeded the three and a half. Come on, minutes Dave. But what about, about the possibilities of him coming to Carolina? Why in the hell you know are we talking about this? There's no possibility of that man coming to Carolina. Can y'all please stop I'm this? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, I know, I know. But no, but the thing is, Twitter's been talking about it. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? We just drafted so, a guy. What? So, Dave, you don't want to see Sierra in, in Charlotte? Is that what you're saying? Sierra can tour. I mean, if you want to see her that bad, she can tour. It's okay. It'd be interesting to see where he ends up and how much he gets paid, though. But let's let's move on to, to like actual Panthers topics, please. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, Dave got on the Bozeman shirt, so I, you got on the Bozeman shirt, which means I'm assuming you heard the clip floating around today, mm-hmm. uh, in regards to Bradley Bozeman. Dave, would you like to summarize what the clip said? The way he blocks doesn't fit the way that Canales wants to run his offense, but it didn't. But it's the same thing that happened last year. With the offense that we had with Thomas Brown, he wasn't a fit for the scheme. So since he's not a fit for the scheme, he could be, he could get released. And I like Bradley Bozeman, man. But that's the reality of it. Like, it's about the fit. If they're going to do it right, they're going to have to do it right. We were talking about retooling for a while, and I think they're past the retool era at this rate. So I think if if he ends up being a cap casualty, I wouldn't be shocked by it. Man, I, I like, again, not an indication on Bozeman. I think Bozeman has shown he's a good player in the right system. We just talked about that with Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. He needs to be put in the best position to succeed. And the way, you know, Canales runs this zone, this zone run defense and the way that, uh, that last year, um, 
with Thomas Brown and Reich, the this, this zone run, it just didn't, it doesn't, it's not conducive. He's a downhill blocker. Get me a hat on a hat, and I'm a road grade this dude. That's what Brad, Bradley Bozeman does best. It's not, it's not gonna fit. If and I think Canales, and again, this is what I've been, I've been said this. Canales, I think is going to he. I think that doesn't necessarily mean Bozeman's going to get released. I think Bozeman could get shifted, maybe to guard, maybe that, maybe that'll help him. But I think there's going to be a significant investment in the interior of the offensive line between draft capital. And free agency, they're yep. going to go out there and get a top tier guard or center, which is what I've been saying, which is why the resources are going to shift from maybe if we don't understand Brian Burns, you shift those resources to the offensive side of football, which what does what, Dave? It protects Bryce Young. And this thing is all about BY9, period. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, so Dave, I mean, how, how do you feel? I mean, you like Bozeman, right? How do you feel about it? I'll be, I mean, he's a great player and I think it's just a matter of, of system fit. We just had this conversation about your favorite quarterback, Russell Wilson. It's ultimately about system fit. Um, appreciate the super chat ALS. Uh, I just posted it in, the, in the tweet. I, we don't have like a PNP cash app, but you can send it to mine. Send it to Dave, man. Send it to Dave. Just signify what it's for. But I'm pretty sure if I got random sending me money, I can assume it's for PNP. <laughs> so. But yeah, man. Uh, yes. So, and we appreciate that too, because it's smart. Yes, YouTube does take 50%. Absolutely. Do. Sure does. Uh, so yes. We gotta move, we gotta move this joint to kick. I think kick is like 95% we keep. I gotta figure that yeah. out though. Because yeah, that means we gotta just, move all you've been, you've been saying that for a long time. Hey, uh, not that long. Get, get it done, Dave. Okay. But yeah, man. So uh Bradley Bozeman, offensive line, could see some shuffling. Um, again, I think it's all about getting guys in the right place to succeed. And um, I think Bozeman could either shift, he could get released. As you can see right now, there's a lot of things going on. There's some things, some guys getting moved. Case in point, Dave. Dante Jackson. Go ahead, Dave. One time, That's one more. Crap, I don't really like that for real. Better ask somebody. Stop playing with me. For real. Yo, yo somebody, I have to find a new button if he gets let go. Yo, somebody on Twitter, and I wish I had the person's name. But I guess he's not like that. Somebody on Twitter, <laughs> immediately after the news put out there, I guess he's not like that for real. And I said, bro, it's too soon. You ain't, <laughs> yo, I had just hit the tweet button immediately. Immediately, immediately <laughs> reposted and said, I guess he's not like that for real. Bro, come on, bro. That was too soon. You got to let, no, it, it's not you too let soon. it simmer, bro. No, you, you don't. Gotta let it simmer. No, you don't. But this shout says a G lot. But now it's, it's law. Yo, if you want to talk about a contract that might have gotten Scott Fitter out of here, if you're going to give Fitter that heat, it's this one. And letting Gilmore walk. Something that Gilmore actually wanted to be here is this one, guys. Is this one? But you know, yeah. Stop! I don't really like that for real. Better ask somebody. Stop playing with me for real. I'm telling yeah, you, man. So I, so I went over this, and I, I went over. Uh, I did a Monday morning huddle or a morning huddle, excuse me, yesterday, and I started going through the, the roster. Started, you know, looking at some guys, and he was. He was one of them. Like we yeah, say, I think six million this year. If you do a June one cut, you spread it out. But what you're starting to see is, and I, I think I said this last year. I coined this phrase last year. But anytime you get a new GM, a new and a new uh, way of life at the front office, you got to move on from mid. And I I like Dante Jackson, but at the end of the day, bro, he 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 got hurt all the time. He was always banged up. When he was on the field, solid. Solid player, but can we do better? Yes, we can do better than Dante Jackson. It's we not even about be, do, do better than Dante. It's not even about whether or not we can do better. It's about it's about the salary that he's got, the contract, right? The contract. The, that's as a result of what? That's as a result of kicking the can and consistently restructuring. He got restructured a, a couple of times under Scott Fitter, and I I posted on Twitter. This is this is the difference between two front offices because has Scott Fitter been here? Guess what? Scott Fitter would have again. been would have restructured him again, kicked the can down the road, right? 
this front office is like, nah, we don't want to just keep him around just to keep him. Decent player, but we think we can do better. And we don't think he's worth the salary that we're going to pay him, so we're going to move on. You know what I mean? So it, it all boils down to contracts. And for those that say the salary cap doesn't matter, this is this is <laughs> this is one of the cases where you see it. You got to move on from bad contracts. Those bad those bad contracts hold you back. It counts as and again, even though we're going to move on from him, that money's still going to go into dead money. It's going to prevent you from doing like there's a lot of teams that operate under no dead money, and those are the teams that tend to spend a lot because they don't have any dead money. They're paying the right people and they don't cut people. They let contracts expire. That's the right thing to do. The right thing to do. I'm with so, you, man. I mean, so I see Jair Alexander. It would be nice. I, I highly doubt that's going to happen, but it would be nice Yo, to man, get Jair. Can we, can we have a discussion about free agents real fast? Go ahead. Dog, they got everybody that keeps talking about all these players that want to come that, that you want in Carolina. You got to remember something. And you've said this plenty of times too, Rashad. Mm-hmm. They got to want to come here. We need volunteers, but it looks like right now all we're going to get is hostages. Like, that's just the reality of it, right? So you're not going to, like, every, what like, you mean, What do you mean in reality all we're going to get is hostages? What do you mean? As in, like, you're, if we're going to get, like, star players here, you're going to have to trade for them. And we don't really have the capital for at least this year's draft to do something like that. So, from my so like I said, you need hostages. You're not going to get to me high end free agents to volunteer to come here. Is my point? Yeah, not That's right true. now. Not right you're now. Not, right? You're not. But I think you can get some guys that have relationships with the part with the coaching staff, right? If there's sure. relationships, they're like not going to be top tier guys. Like no, Mike no, Evans. I, Mike Evans is. is now I'm is having fun time. because I, I. Yeah. I told y'all. I told you he wasn't coming here, guys. Like, I told you he wasn't coming here. I told y'all he was not coming here. Or T. Higgins. I told y'all. I told y'all he wasn't coming here there either. Like, these guys are not going to come here. You're going to have to trade for these guys if you want them here. And and that's my thing. And I understand the relationship aspect of it because that's why we got a lot of play- – Some we Matt Rule brought in some okay, play- decent player. Like, Reddick. Reddick wouldn't have came here initially if it wasn't for Matt Rule. But we also got others too, right? So I think Car- Car- Canales will be able to get some good players. I'm just saying we're not going to get the names that I keep hearing out in these streets. Like Calvin Ridley the, is going to be the next discussion point. That's going to be the next name that we're going to keep talking about. Is Calvin Ridley really going to come here? He might end up being one of the top free agents. Are we going to overpay for him to come here? Would you? I wouldn't. But teach his own. Yeah. But, I mean, is anybody, uh, just going back to Dante Jackson, is anybody really surprised uh, that Dante Jackson is, is we're moving on from him? You know what I mean? I, I feel like, again, the guy, he, he was hurt. He would play a game. He would he would get banged up. He would leave. There was always something wrong with him. I think there's going to be a market for him. Um, I think he, somebody's going to pick him up. I think he's talented. Uh, I think he's going to, I think he's going to, I think he's going to get signed, but I just don't think he's not going to make what he was making before. And that's fine. That's okay. Helen Keller's dog. What's good, guys? Hope you all are well. Um, Panthers are finally going all in on a rebuild instead of the awkward win now mode we've been in since 2021. Yeah, I, I think some of these contract again, some of these moves are indicative of you got to bite the bullet this year. Let's let's go ahead and and clean it up so that in 2025 we can really hit the ground running. And I think that's what Carolina is doing. Case in point, this next move. Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst was also announced that we're going to release him. And before we even talk about Hayden Hurst, I do want to wish him well because, bro, that injury last year was nasty. Um, he had no it business coming good, back. He, he had, had no business, had no coming, business back. coming back. I agree, 100% agree with that. So I do hope and, and hope that he's doing well, uh, regardless of the fact that he's, he's got released. This is a move that doesn't save us any cap space. 56000 to be exact. That's That's that is very minimal cap space that we freed up if it's a, a traditional cut. If it's a June run, June 1 cut, which we don't we won't know until later, but if it's a June 1 cut, then uh then we'll save a little bit more this year. But sometimes it's not about, and I, this is what I'd be trying to tell y'all. Sometimes it's not about saving cap in, in the current year, right? Sometimes that, that restructure stuff, 
And, and when Dan when Dan Morgan said, hey, we're going to be smarter about the restructures, that's what it, it signaled to me. I knew at that point guys like Hayden Hurst are going to get released. They have these three-year contracts. And, again, these guys are just – are they game changers? No, but can we free up space in 2025 by getting rid – like, for, for example, getting rid of Hayden Hurst right now, that's going to free up nothing this year if it's a tr- traditional cut. It's going to save us nothing this year. But it's gonna save us nine million next year. Yeah, that's big, man. So some 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 guys, we have to start moving on from mid. If you're not gonna be a contributor, can we replace your your uh your production in a draft? Can we get somebody else on the roster to step up that's behind you? And for me, Hayden Hurst, I, I say yes. We can get a tight end if first of all, I think Stefan Gilmore uh Stefan Gilmore, Stefan Sullivan. Is is on a tra- uh, upward trajectory. Then I think when you when you talk about Ian Thomas, another guy who I think we need to move on from, bro. Tommy Trimble can do what Ian Thomas does. He's just as good as a blocker. And if not, yeah. pick one up in the draft. Like these you, these guys are replaceable and should not be on any kind of uh, multi year contracts with us. Sorry. Here we go. I'm seeing Noah fan. I'm like, guys, did you just listen to what I just told y'all? The, why would a tight end like, no, like, no, like, offense, like no offense, but no offense has the connection, right? From Does Seattle, from Seattle, yes. That that's why it makes sense, guys. Man, I'm just telling you that one makes sense. Just that like Ron Rivera, sense. just like Cam was supposed to go to to Washington because of Ron Rivera. Bro, like, no, I'm just like, saying it, it's more plausible. That's all I'm saying. Hostages. No offense. Will he move the needle though? Like, like what, what are we talking about here? Will he move the needle? Would he move the needle? That's the question. Oh, that's a good point, too. He just got to Seattle. He doesn't know Canales. Oh, there's no Canales? My bad. Yeah, no. Nah. No, but somebody, I'm talking, no, somebody else from the staff. The staff. Oh, yeah, from the other from the, the, staff, of the staff, bro. The staff matters. Staff matters. If I'm bringing in staffers that I had a connection with through working with Canales at some point, then that connection coming from a coach, that matters too. Everybody's talking about Noah Fan will be better than all our tight ends, but it don't matter if we don't use them. Well, Dave, Dave, you can't say that because it's a completely different scheme, and we know we know Canales uses tight ends. Come on, Dave. You can't use right. that point. It's a whole fine, new coaching staff. Fine, fine, fine. I still don't That's think a whole this... new coaching staff, bro. That's why you move on from guys like this so you can get guys that you will use. Well, we'll see. We got we have we've been keeping four tight ends on the fifty three man roster for like the past. Bro, that's years. old way. Yo, you keep bringing up old. It's new. But my it's, point it's is, my point stuff. is, we have tight ends. Is my point. I understand it's the old way. No, of we life. don't. They all mid. Yo, no, <laughs> we don't. Not not, not all. My bad. I, hey, They're not all mid. Phrase. Some guys. I like I like Tommy Trumbull. And, and I like and I like Stephon like Sullivan. So you already it got stops, two. It stops there. Everything else, y'all. Did <laughs> y'all love Reese? No, mid. He's mid. Okay. <laughs> Hayden Hurst, <laughs> sorry. Ian Thomas, mid. Everybody else can go. All them dudes is mid. And y'all love Reese. Don't just don't start capping now. Y'all love Reese. They're mid, bro. Moving on from mid. <laughs> Move on from this slide. Who's next? Who's yeah, next? so he, uh, so uh, excuse me, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst is a guy that again, hopefully, hopefully he's doing okay. He's yeah. doing okay. Right, he should retire. He had, he had he the, the uh, short term memory loss due yeah, to the, nah, he should, the, uh, he should retire, the injury. Bro. I he like Hayden retire. Hurst. He should retire. I, I think I think that there was a uh, there was a fit for. I think he we started out strong with him. He was getting a lot. He was getting a lot of uh, targets, and then it just fell off the face of the planet. Not sure what happened, uh, but but yeah, I, I just think that uh, you know, ho- hopefully he can go go get a, a, a will retire. Right, if he's not okay, like Dave said, retire. You should retire, yo. And then you know, because again, that short term, what I don't know what it what it was called, but my man had memory loss, couldn't remember what was going on. Yo, you got you got to be careful with that, bro. You got to be you got to be real careful with that. Fan was with Canales in Seattle in 2022. Appreciate the super chat, Noli. Shout shout to Noli with the fact check. Appreciate that fact checking, Noli. I still stand where I stand. So it makes sense. I mean, yes, he has to want to come here. He I do think Fant would be an upgrade. Uh, I do think that. And I think under in Canales' system where a tight end will be used, I would take Fant. 
Fair I enough. I would take Fan. Let's move on All to right. the next the next guy so, that got released. No, nobody got released, Dave, but we gotta talk about this. The move, the move of the day, slash. We we knew this was coming. I talked about this yesterday on the morning huddle, but now we gotta talk about it. Dave Brian Burns gets the non-exclusive franchise tag. What are your thoughts? Because you haven't had a chance uh, to talk about this, although I have already. What are your thoughts on tagging Brian Burns? It's a no-brainer. Um, I don't think we're going to get the two first-round picks if he does get a deal out there. However, I, I could see them negotiating to get maybe a first-round pick, maybe. Um, uh, I could also see a scenario where he ends up playing on it. Um, but from a cap standpoint, I don't think any of us mm. want that to happen. Zero chance. Why zero See, chance? Zero chance he plays on that, bro. It 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 does. It's way too much damage to the salary cap. Way too much. If he signs that tag, then what? You trade. You you either you got to get a long term receipt. That puts pressure. That's where. That's where Brian. We talk about leverage. That's Brian where Brian Burns leverage. has the leverage. Right. It it it's, it becomes a balancing act. Right. We're playing. It, we're playing chess right now. So. You, I think, I think this is a this, this is the ultimate chess game right now. Let me break this down and let me let me see it. let me tell you how I feel about it. Here's how I feel about it, and this is just all me guessing. I don't got any any tea or nothing like that. This is just me talking. Brian Burns to me was allowed to go test free agency or not free agency, but allowed to go test the market because the Panthers don't believe anybody else is going to pay him 30, 30 plus million. But we don't even. But wait, stop, stop right there. And and we and it was discussed on Quick Blitz. We don't know if that's what he's asking for, guys. Okay, even it. Okay, even if that's even if it even if that's not what he's asking for, whatever he's asking for, the Panthers don't want to pay it. Obviously, can we agree on that? Sure. Okay, and so the Panthers, I think, are going to say, "Hey, if we don't if we don't want to pay it, we don't think you're going to command that from the market either, right?" And so that's what I think the the Panthers are saying. Hey, go ahead, bro. Test the market. We still got some leverage because, hey, at the end of the day, it's the non-exclusive tag, right? So you can go negotiate. If somebody offers you something, we got the first right to match it. So we don't think anybody's going to offer you that much. Go out there. Go ahead, bro. Go but ahead. Go a, ahead. But, but here's go the ahead thing. And, and test the market. And if, if you come back with that, then we'll talk. But here's the thing, bro. Here's the other thing you got to consider. You also got to consider that Whoever offers this, the initial cost is going to be two first round picks if we decide not to match. So there's also a factor of we're going to have to be willing to negotiate to lower that price. Because you, I, I'm gonna yes. be honest with you, I think somebody's gonna gonna be willing to pay him what he wants. But the dilemma is, is whether or not they're willing picks. to pay him what he wants and give up picks to do it. Fact, and, that, I, and again, so let me and I, you're right, Dave. And let me clear this up because I did tweet that and how it's supposed to work, right? This is how it's supposed to work. You get the non-exclusive franchise tag. What's supposed to happen is that if somebody offers Brian Burns, let's say $25 million a year, right? Brian Burns negotiated that. He comes back to the Panthers. Hey, I got an offer for X, Y, Z amount for 25 million. Do you guys want to match it? If we say no, then the team that uh, that offers that, that offer Brian Burns has to give us two first-round picks. That's how it's supposed to work. One for this year. One for next year. That's how it's supposed to work. Yep. However, however, there have been several cases where a team can come back and say, all right, we're not going to give you two first round picks, but we're willing to give you a first round pick and maybe a second or something like that. So there's some some wiggle room. You can negotiate. You can negotiate that, but you're going to give up some picks. So, go, which goes back to Dave's point, you still got to give up. You got to pay and give up picks. I don't know that there's too many. And again, the teams that are going to be willing to do that are going to be playoff caliber teams. Guys that are maybe one one pass rusher away or a, dom, a, a dominant pass rusher away from, from making a, a major playoff push and get, make it to the Super Bowl. So when you look at it, when I did the mock draft, guys like uh, teams like Detroit, mm -hmm. teams uh, teams like that are really right there. If you pair, pair him up, and they got the cap space too because you got to have Hutchison? the cap space. Bro, what? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. So I, if I'm Detroit, and they got the draft capital, 
right? They yeah. have mo- they have like mad picks within the first two days. They got a lot of picks. They got a first round. Then I think they have a couple second rounds. Of, I can't remember what else they had. But if if I'm Detroit, if I'm Detroit, bro, I'm yeah. You know I mean, I might pick up the phone. They they close. They close, man. I might pick up the, the phone. Lions are bro. close. And and shout out to shout out to Carlo for this. He says no one has changed team to be on being on non exclusive tags since 2000. That was Joey Galloway. Joey Galloway, and, and prior to that, it was Sean Gilbert with the damn Carolina Panthers. How that work out for us? Exactly. That's why it nobody does it. That's why nobody does it. So here's what I think is good. This here's my prediction as to what's going to happen with Brian Burns. My official prediction. I got two. My my official prediction and my bold hope. prediction. Uh oh, I got a bold prediction. Yeah, you my do. My official prediction is that Brian Burns is going to test the market. He's going to go see what's out there. Eventually, the Panthers will get a long-term deal done with Brian Burns, and he's going to get extended. And it has to happen quick. It's, this is not something that's going to happen. It, it, I saw somebody post, oh, it's, it's going to drag out until week one. Of the, of the, it, this Here, cannot. Here's the thing. Let's, 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 look at, let's, let's, let's have the discussion point about this because this, this is a good discussion point. If this thing drags too long, we can't sign anybody other than our rookies, most likely. Bingo. So, like, you guys need to understand. So now everybody, Noah Fan, Calvin Ridley, and all these other guys, because we had to tag this man, if we don't get a long-term deal done, if we don't tag and trade him, we're not signing nobody, guys. And free agency starts next week. This has to happen quick. Like, this – and, again, I, I think he has to sign it, right? He has to sign it. Right, so there, there is a, some nuance to this, where he has to sign the tag. This is where Brian Burns, and we talk about leverage. This is where Brian Burns holds the leverage. This is where he has it, because he could he could sign that and handicap the entire Carolina Panthers franchise and not allow us to make any moves, and we are in big trouble. So the the onus then becomes on the Carolina Panthers to be like, all right, we got to get something done. We got to figure this out, and it's got to happen quick. This cannot drag out. This cannot drag out into week one of the season. This can't be that, bro. This cannot be that. This cannot be and, that and situation. That, I've been saying for weeks that Brian Burns has all the leverage because we all knew that we we're going to have to tag him if he didn't get a deal done. So if he didn't get what he wanted, he would just let you get. He would just let Carolina tag him, and then at that point, if he decides to sign it, it's going to hit the cap. And I had this whole back and forth about people saying they didn't want to pay the man. I'm like, guys, paying them is going to be cheaper right now. If you need cap space, you all talking about all trying to sign all these free agents. You ain't going to be able to do nothing if he signs that tag and we end up and he ends up playing on it or we're not able to trade him or we're not able to. We can't do nothing. We'll just have enough money to pay the rookies. And that is it. That's it. Considering, so considering that now you can hold off on playing DB. But oh, by the way, the price Today's price, yesterday's price is not today's price. So if you hold but, off on trying to extend DB, it's gonna now. You're not gonna be able to sign Luvu. You're not gonna be able to no, sign other free agents nope, that we're gonna need. Nobody. We're so, gonna be able to sign but, anybody. So that's so why let, when y'all guys were talking about don't pay him, I'm looking at y'all like y'all crazy. Because you don't me, want him to let, walk for nothing. Let me read. Let me read this from uh, Mike K from the Charlotte Observer because he broke it down really well in the article he put out. The shot to Mike K. He said the Panthers can also work out a trade with another team for an adjusted return of value if uh, Carolina and Brian Burns cannot reach an agreement. The franchise tagged entire total will count against the Panthers' salary cap until a contract extension or a trade is completed. Right? So and he talks about it. He says Burns has the leverage to impair Panthers' free agency plans if he holds out from signing the tag's contract. Right, uh, so it's it's gonna be it. it this got to move quick, bro. This cannot be something that drags out. This cannot be something that drags out, and it sucks because I firmly believe that if Brian Burns, I see both sides of this once again, both sides of this once again, because if Brian Burns would have went out there and had 15 sacks this year, I don't think it would be a debate. And, we need and to by play. the way, guys, we got to do better than just looking at the sack numbers. There's more to it than that. He's a top free agent for a reason. If we decided not to tag him and he walks, he would be one of the first guys to get paid. Sex matter, Dave. Uh, pressures do too. 
They do, but sacks matter. Hits do too. Disruption Sack matters. Matter. Sacks matter, but it's not the only piece is my point. He's top it 10 don't. in multiple categories since he's been in the league. It don't, but we I, I agree with you. I'm just, hey, I understand we, that we, sacks matter. Bro, it, okay, okay, Dave. Okay, sacks don't matter. Sacks no, don't no, no, matter. No, no, no. I right? didn't say sacks on, don't hold matter. On. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell, tell, will, will we be having this argument? Will, will we be having this argument if Brian Burns had 15, 17 sacks this year? No, because everybody stares no, at we that wouldn't. one. No, but because everybody stares at that one stat and they don't stare at everything else. That's my point. No, I'm not I'm saying. S- I'm not saying sacks don't matter. I'm saying sacks is only one piece of it. There's it is more- a huge piece of it. Pause. There's no man. I think it is when it comes to contracts. It is point play, bro. It is. Look at the look at the high the highest paid set uh the highest paid uh, um edge rushers. These dudes got numbers. They put up numbers. It matters. It, it, we just I, say I it, didn't bro, say it doesn't matter. Agree, like, don't, bro, I, I agree with you. They and we can't. Only reason we got our capes on is because we like Brian Burns. No, no, that's the only just, reason why we got our capes on. And I'm not. I'm with you. I got I, my capes on thing. too. I'm it's, a Burns it's, fan, bro. It's, the thing bro, is, so here's I'm here's no, my bro, thing. I like him. No, no. Here's my thing. The man, if the man plays for us again, this will be his fourth head coach that he's had. He's I gone agree, through, bro. No, listen. The man's gone through four head coaches. Four. He will be if he comes back this year. That will be his fourth head coach. Not even counting the interims. That would just be his fourth head coach. He got drafted during Rivera. He's been here through all of it. He's never seen a winning season. He doesn't even know what it looks like. And then part of it is because of all the scheme changes. That man converted from a four three to a three four. I agree with you. <laughs> like so, I think and 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 so like there's never there hasn't been any stability at the coaching lot, the coaching ranks. So if you say, all right, that's more reason to let him go, then fine. But well, you know what? Pull a Dave Gettleman. Pull the tag. Remember when we did that? I do. <laughs> Just pull Josh, the Dave Gettleman. Pull, pull the Dave I Gettleman. I remember vividly. Yo, pull, pull the Dave Gettleman, remove the tag, and then we get nothing but a comp pick for him. If we do it right. Right? Because we've already released enough players. If the, if the equation will go right, we might not even get a comp pick for him. So you're gonna the thing is we've letting we've let previous Ed Rushers walk out of this door and then complain about why we don't have a pass rush. And see, right now we're sitting at right now our our starting it would be DJ Johnson and who who and um Barno. Amari right? Barno. Yep. DJ Johnson and Amari Barno would be the starters right now if this man doesn't come back. Those are our starters. And then you and then you're gonna wonder why we can't get any get any get any, get a pass rush. Yeah, see that that and it, and, and and truth be told, Brian Burns has been a team player for a, for a yes, minute. he's been a team player, guys. Bro, he wants to be here. Goes back bro. to that volunteers versus hostages discussion from earlier. The man wants to be here, bro. You can't you can't argue, Brian. And I agree with Jerry says people confuse bad year versus bad career for Burns. Uh, maybe I I don't think I'm doing that. Uh, but I do think that Brian. It's no doubt that Brian Burns has had an up and down career with the coach. There's a lot of factors that go into it with the coaches, the mold, the scheme. I agree with you, bro. I agree with you, Dave. But here's the deal: we all came into this year saying Brian Burns is gonna feast. They put him in the the best positions to see. He's good. He's finally moved to outside linebacker. He's gonna eat. He's gonna ball out. And bro, this was the year, bro. If any, you can't. I'm sorry. I love Brian Burns, bro. And I, I'm trying. It, it pains me to do this, but you can't lay an egg. I'm not gonna say lay an egg. You I'll can't you have egg, though. He okay. okay I'm, I, I misspoke. I, I'm not gonna say lay an egg. You can't have a a year. You have to have your best year in your contract year, right? Everybody does it. Oh, it helps. Every, everybody does it. No, it, it does. It does more than help. It yeah, does more than it, it help. Enhances. It, it does helps. more than help. Big time. You have to ball in your contract year, right? And I really think, again, if I I really firmly believe this, and I could be way off, but if if, if Brian Burns has 17 and a half sacks this year, and we again, wouldn't have you having this discussion. And I get bro, and I get it. So the, opp- right. I, the opportunity, hold on. I, I, I get it. The opportunity, right, wasn't there because you know the factors that being that, you know. 
uh, the offense w- couldn't. Uh, the, they the offense they were was always terrible. Playing from behind, right? They were always playing from behind, so the, the others out, opposing you don't have to pay. You can't. You don't get the opportunity you to pin his ears back. Get, I, I get. Yeah. I get that. I get okay. all that. I get all that. I get that. I the man, the man, dog, we didn't lead. We 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 didn't lead in regulation all I season. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just but the opportunity. It, we let's not act like there was zero opportunity though. But we, now we, here, but now here's another question for because somebody mentioned the fact that Lou's been playing better. So I'm going to ask a question. It'll be this because people shine when others are distractions. Do you think? Lou's production is due to some of the distractions that Prime Burns had on that field because we know that team's game plan for the man. Um, yeah, I think absolutely. So Far now, away. when you so now, I'm, 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 I want everybody else to hear this. So now, if you take Burns out of that equation, you take him out, you don't have somebody coming on that side. Do you guys think that Lou would have similar production? I, yeah, I think I, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't, don't know. Think so, and that's not I a knock to Luvu, because the goal is you have folks do what they need to do so others can shine. But you don't. But and I think Luvu can ball, but now Luvu's going to get the same. Going to get similar attention that Burns got. That's my point. If we don't have Burns here, like when you think about it's our different, front, it's different role, it's different roles. But yeah, I, I get your point. But different roles. Like, they think don't about play it, the man. same position. So it's, think it's about different. it, man. Like when we when we had those outstanding front fours. I mean, when you had big money, big money was distracting to let everybody else shine. When you had Pep and everybody else, that made forces the issue to get other people in too. So like, I think I think you guys gotta. I think folks are looking at, and that's why I keep saying that sex is not the only thing. I'm not saying it's not important, but it ain't the only thing. There's other y'all really, factors y'all this. really about to y'all really about to make me look into the number uh, of pass pass rush attempts because I I'm seeing that I'm seeing that 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 uh talking point fly around where he hasn't had the opportunity because we've been playing from behind and I'm about to really dive into that yeah really about to make me dive into that uh yeah. but uh, Eric says uh Huff for 14 per and Trice in uh, round three Luvu back to uh to line of scrimmage maybe. Maybe, bro. Maybe that that's an. We gonna have to find out something. We got to figure something out. Um, did, for, as in Huff for fourteen season did nothing. That's what uh, uh, Omar said. Y'all, if, listen, man. If look, all I'm gonna say is this: If Burns is bad as you as everybody keeps saying that he is, he wouldn't be a top free agent if he if he's if he's available. He wouldn't be. He's the top free agent pass rusher if he's if he's available. Point blank, period. So I, I just, I, I just want you guys to, to, to understand that. So that's all, dog. That is, yo, Omar. That's a crazy stat. I gotta, I gotta look into that. I'm not sure. I, I look into it. I'm gonna look into it for this year because that, that seems like a lot of. That's that a big. Di- like that. that would make sense because we couldn't, re- dude. Yeah, we see, couldn't I, stop- but- we could right, stop I'm, about the to, I'm about to look into. I'm about to look into it now because we we just be throwing around stuff. Let me. No, let me, I let mean, me I mean, we watch the games too. I mean, I we mean, know we that watch. they get to run. Yeah, they, we watch, but we all there's also we not counting we not counting pass rush attempts either. I mean, if if the delta is nineteen hundred between the best and and the and, yeah, and I what don't we think do. that's that's way too much. That's way too many. It's not that many, unless you're talking about career. I'm talking about this year. No, I mean, let me think. Yeah, that's yeah, that that's a ridiculous. Hold on, what? Let me, what did he say? Seventeen hundred pass attempts for Carolina when lead leaders got thirty six hundred. Does that make sense? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we yeah yeah you got to dig in that one. Here's a here's a super chat. Shout out to UZ Spoon. I feel Burns sacrifice sacks for his health and actual defensive stops once they got six losses, trying to keep them in contention for the division. I'm not gonna say the man quit. I'm not doing that. I'm not rolling with that. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. 
I'm not. I'm not rolling. I mean, I mean, it, it's been it's been some things that have been said, but I'm not going. I, I I'm can't not, sit up I'm here not, and question I'm not, about I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not questioning somebody's effort. Yeah, I'm not. We're not, we not doing that. I'm not, not doing, doing that. that. Uh, All right, man. Listen, and I said this at the shout out to Sheena and Vasa, and I said this on Quick Blitz earlier today. Let me tell you guys something, man. I remember when this fan base didn't want to pay Cam Newton and thought it was too much money that he got. And then within a year, cap. huh? I, I didn't say us. I mean, I know because I've been to say, bro, because he, no, he never us. was the highest paid quarterback. Yeah, but the, that was the point. They didn't want him to be the highest paid quarterback. They didn't think he did enough. This is pre MVP year, remember? All right, they didn't think he had it. He did enough to to warrant that. Nobody could understand that extending him helps the cap space. And then he wins MVP. Then other quarterbacks passed him like a year later, making way more than what Cam got. It ain't just F-150. It wasn't just F-150, guys. That was something to look like me, too. All right. But, yeah, man. So that's Brian Burns. I, I just I think this fan base. Extended, bro. I just think this fan base. Yeah, I think we're going to. I think the guy. For our sake, we better hope he gets extended or traded. Yeah, let's let's get it done, man. Like, I, I, think, I think we could figure it out. Um. But we gotta. Stop it might not be the number he wants. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that to be true. We don't know, what, don't that know is. what his number is. I don't know what his number is, bro. I don't know. I'm not gonna claim to know it, but it's obviously a number the Panthers aren't willing to pay because they, if it was, they would have paid it by now. Yeah, you know I mean, so I, I just, for me, I just, we as a fan base have to do better about this because this is a historical thing with this fan base, bro. It's just a historical thing. Like we don't, and I think maybe it might be from the history of the Hornets not resigning folks, and then it just morphed into the Panthers not resigning folks. Like we have a habit of not wanting to keep people, um, not wanting to sign and pay folks. I just, it's just a historical thing. I don't, I don't get it, but I just know the way that the cap works now, the way that the NFL is now when it comes to the price of certain things. When you talk about on the offensive side, the most important position that you got to take care of is the quarterback. But on the defensive side, it's, it's pass rusher, guys. It's edge rusher. Like, so that's, that's where I'm at with that. Shout out to Diego Ortiz. He says, you guys are good. Try to be in my New York Giants spot. Yeah, because the they, they're, they're, they're letting spot. Saquon they're letting Saquon be a free agent, which I think is the right decision. We've we been, no, you, no, it's not the right decision. You got to trade him, bro. You can't let him walk for nothing. You're not going to tag him. You don't let him walk for nothing either. That's just asinine. At, at least, well, they at tagged least them la- the problem is they tagged him last year. They could tag him again. Dog, not with that 25% jump. It, it cost it costs, but what I'm saying is that you at least try to get something. You try to get something for him. But it goes That's back to the, saying. it goes back to the discussion point. When you make the decision to tag somebody, if you can't get a deal done, you can't afford to tag him two years in a row. They changed the rules so it makes it more difficult to do that because it's detrimental. It's a detriment to the cap. I mean, folks are complete. Look, man, if he's not like you look at Brian Burns right now, $24 million will go bye bye as soon as he signs. As soon as he signs that tag, our cap is going to go from like what, 35 to like 13 or 34 Great to 13. Segue. Great segue. Here, here's after the after the Brian Burns tag, it's 11.9 million, which is just enough basically to uh, to sign a draft class. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the, the the good news is that there is some space on the way, you know, with the with the proposed re- release of Dante Jackson and Hayden Hurst. Um, and this is just traditional cuts. It's not June one cuts. If they decide to go June one cuts, it'll free up a little bit more here, but it'll take less away from uh, from 2025. What I would want what I want you to keep an eye on is look at that 2025 number with the cuts of Dante Jackson and um, mm-hmm. and uh, Hayden Hurst. When you look at that, you're starting to see 2025 shape up. And what have we been saying? 2025 is going to be the year. Like this year, year, okay, 2020, 2024 is going to be cool. We might get a couple dubs. It, we want to show some progress, but 2025 is going to be the year where things really start to flip around. I think they're trying to set themselves up for success in 2025 and not really worry about the short term. And that's, I mean, when you got a new regime like that, sometimes you're going to cut, you're going to cut ties. And I think this Brian Burns decision is really going to be. Um, you know, a, a tough decision. Because again, if you sign Brian Burns to a long-term deal, the good news is that you would get some cap relief 
in this year, but you will also take away a lot from 2025. Same with same same with Luvu, same with Derek Brown, same with all those guys. So it's mm-hmm. it's all about the balance of short term and long term. You got to balance both. And but any any long term deals we sign, you're gonna start to see uh 2025 dwindle, and it's gonna dwindle quick. Um, because we always tend to backload our deals. Now, will that happen with uh, Tillis and uh, and and Morgan? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah, the, the Burns tag. That's it. We something has to be done. You cannot. There's zero chance he plays on that tag, or we're screwed. <laughs> Look, man, we're gonna see. But I, I just, we just gotta. Think it through. Everybody's coming up with these these glory, glory trades. I mean, best case scenario, we get a first round pick for out of it. Yeah, the best. Yeah, that's the best. The best case scenario for me is resigning, but is extending them. Yeah, and then option two is if we let him walk, at least get something back. You got to get a first round pick. Uh, it, this draft class is very. This is a good draft class. Like, there's some good wide receivers. The edge is it's top heavy with the edge rusher. So if you're gonna if you're gonna let him walk, you're gonna have to walk away with a with an edge rusher within the the first couple picks. Because after you know after you get past Chop and a couple of those other guys, it, it goes downhill from there. So second round mid midway through the second round, top elite edge rusher talent is gone, in my opinion. So that you know what that tell you know what that you know what you just told me. It tells me that if we let him walk, we don't get no compensation. But I'm pretty sure we'll get something. You gotta take edge rush with the first pick. No, it not have to be the first pick. It, it does have to be within the first first couple rounds, though, for sure. First two rounds. So if you, if what? we get multiple, if we get if we trade them and get a first round pick, you can spend that first pick on an offensive lineman or a wide receiver, as long as you come back around that second round and get an edge rush. Yeah. So I just remember, and I want to remind you guys, and y'all know y'all don't want to hear it, that we. We, we had a chance. We had two chances to fix this problem. When we said no, when we said no to two first-round picks and a second-round pick, when we had a chance to change Brian Burns, that was the moment you should have extended him. When we said no and decided to trade DJ Moore instead of Brian Burns, that was another time you should have extended him. It was two times you should have extended him. So you can't be mad at Burns wanting to get his money. Because it's clear he knows that you thought he was a future piece for the long-term plans. And he's not even in his prime yet, if you keep it a buck. He's only 25 years old. So Yeah. That's 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 the upside to Burns, is he's so young. Yeah, you man. I mean? that, you, and that's the and that's why the values where it's at. Like, I don't think folks are discussing that enough. You got like he's 25, he ain't 30. Twenty five. Well, I mean, well, that that's kind of well, yeah. This is his deal, man. Like, this is his first. No, deal. it's not. It's not his last one. No, though. Mo. But my point is, the last one is where you this really is the first. Cash this out. is the this is the but the, the the this is the first time of him getting into free agency. He's gonna want to get what he can get. Yeah, I I don't blame him. And again, I'm never gonna hate on somebody trying to get their bag. Get your bag. Get paid. But the, it's also a, it's also a business. The Panthers have to look at it from the best, what's best for business for the Panthers. And again, like I said, it's all about Bryce. It's all about Bryce Young. And if if they are sacrificing funds here to put into Burns, and he's not he's not budging, I can see us moving on, bro. I really can see it. I can see it. I really can see it. It's it's gonna be it, it's gonna be an interesting week for sure, oh, yeah. because the, the league year starts uh, next week, and uh, if basically, he signs, if if he signs that tag, if we still ain't done nothing with the situation, we it's, yeah, it's it. can't we drag. Go, it can't what, drag. What 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 do they used to call it? Dollar Tree. We'll be shopping at what Gary used to say. Do we be shopping yeah. at the Dollar Tree? We'll be yeah, at the Dollar, Dollar Tree. Tree. Yeah, we won't even be there, bro. We won't be shopping at all. We be outside. You can't even get inside the club, day. Oh, well. We're gonna be looking. We're gonna be watching. We're gonna be in the parking lot. <laughs> we ain't gonna be able to do nothing. And then they'll be like, "What are the Panthers doing? What are the Panthers doing? How come they're not signing anybody?" Because we can't. It's, yo, it's it's really it's imperative that we get a deal done or we trade them. Something's got to happen quick. It can't just be. It, it can't. We can't hold this out 
it is it is what it is. And the pan like Dave said just a few minutes ago, unfortunately, the Panthers kind of backed themselves into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's just the reality we're in. Like that it, there's you can't change it. You can't change it. Uh, do you think Burns is being fair though? 27 million a year would have made him a top three. Uh, do you think he's better than Nick at 34 million and why at 28 million? No, I get I take Nick and TJ uh over over Burns, and I, I don't think it's relatively close to be honest with you right now. But you um, have to but but you have to remember the the market resets. Yes. Even it like, ha, hypothetically, let's say he does 130. Next year, the next guy is gonna probably 132. He might not even have the same production that Burns had. That's my point. Like, that's just the nature of the market. Like quarterbacks went from making 20 mil a year to now you got quarterbacks making in the 45 to 50 million dollar range. They just let go Russell Wilson and they and they, they're taking a 80 they're taking 85 million dollars in cap of a cap hit for the next 2 years. Like that's what I'm talking about. Like the market changes for certain positions. Like for running back it's falling, but for quarterback and edge rushers it's climbing. So, appreciate the yeah, chat. Yeah, and he's right. I mean, the market does go up, so it's not, I don't think it's a matter of being fair or unfair. I think that, again, yesterday's price is not today's price. And the salary cap goes up every year for this purpose, right? So you can you can go, you can spend more at certain positions, at the premium position. Edge rusher is a premium position, so the price tag is always going to go up, just like quarterbacks. You know what I mean? It's always going to go up. Uh, and like Dave said, so, certain positions like running back, it's always a market. Like the market is going to shift, and maybe, maybe running backs will get paid more in the future. We don't know, but right now, it, that ain't the move. Certain positions are going to get paid. Edge rusher is any position that affects the quarterback directly is going to be a, a premium position, right? Yeah. So when you talk about ta off to offensive tackles off or any offensive linemen, you talk about receivers, you talk about edge rushers, you talk about cornerbacks, those are going to be your premium positions because they have direct connections to the quarterback, right? PFF did an article about this a few years back, and like it, it makes sense the 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 positions that impact the quarterback directly are going to be paid the most. They're going to have the most value. This is why uh, teams draft where they draft. They draft players the way they the where they draft them. Invest where they invest in in free agency. That's why it matters. So I I don't again yesterday's price is not today's price, but I'm not paying. The the point it it, it is right. Thirty four million Nick Bosa. Oh uh, T J Watt twenty eight. I mean. I'm not you can't TJ Watt, Dave. Come on, bro. TJ Watt, you can't TJ Watt is putting up Patrick Mahomes got fifty million dollars a year a few years ago. He's not the highest paid quarterback in the NFL anymore. He's like ninth now. It changes. Like you can't, so you can't. I understand what you're saying, but it's gonna change every year. The price is gonna go up. 30 mil or 28 mil or 29 mil is going to be a bargain in a year or two. That's my point. Will. That's no, my right. point. Like, that's I think you right. got, yeah, like that's, that's what I'm trying to get. That's what I'm trying to put a, put across dog. Like look at some, like somebody, just, hold on. I, I, I ain't missed $47 yeah. million dollars for Daniel Jones. Yeah. Daniel Jones guys. Like think about that for a second. None of y'all think Daniel Jones is good. None of y'all. None of y'all. And if you do, we gotta have we have to have a discussion. I know a lot of Giants fans that want him out of the paint. That man is making forty-seven million dollars, and he's probably not even a top half quarterback in the league. Forty-seven million. So I mean, is it about potential? Probably, absolutely. The dude's twenty-five, and and there's another super chat we gotta hit. But appreciate the super chat, Diego. Would you rather spend 30 mil on Burns or Allen? Probably Allen. And why is that, Dave? Potential. Why is that, Dave? Potential. I like I like Josh Allen. I like Josh Allen. I'll spend it on both of them is my point. But if you're making me pick. Uh, 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 Dave, are you are you backing yourself into a wall? No. Yet? No, if I think Allen's a better pass rusher, then I'm gonna say Allen. I mean, but but we're talking like 
Yeah, if I, if you telling me, if you ask me, who would I rather sign? If I could, if I know for a fact I can get one of them, I would sign Josh Allen. I would sign Josh Allen over Brian Burns, easily. Wow. But that ain't gonna happen. Wow, I was not expecting that from all the 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 Burns, uh, you know, d- uh, defense. I I wasn't expecting that one. I was not expecting that, Dave. I thought you was going all in on Burns. No, but my point is, is that you, if if I think that Josh Allen is a better pass rusher, then you, you bet- do it. And a lot of folks are saying Burns all day, so some a lot of folks don't don't agree. So a lot of folks aren't agreeing with me. Hold on a second. Somebody said we missed a, a super chat, so let me let me pull it. If Burns signs the. T- <laughs> <laughs> if Burns signs the tag, then Dave better suit up for left tackle and shot better forget that he got Derrick Henry and get ready yeah, to play wide receiver. I definitely got Derrick Henry, bro. I, I remember that. I can't remember that. I can't forget that. Excuse me. Dog, I ain't got I ain't got good enough feet to be playing left tackle. Let me be clear. Definitely don't worry, got, man. It can go play left jo- tackle. Definitely got uh um Josh Norman for sure. Mm-mm-mm. I don't know, Dave. The seventeen and a half sacks. Josh Allen must that must that's must have swayed you, Dave. Yeah, but, but seventeen and a half seventeen and a half sacks. I honestly need, to, bit, I, need to, I need to I need to I need to compare like the staff from everything, not just the sacks, like the pressures and, and hits and everything else. But I I would I would like to assume that he also probably has more hits and he also has more pressures mm-hmm. than, than Brian Burns. Yeah, but yeah, he does. So, I can tell you that. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I would, I would, I would say that Burns is top ten in, in, in all those other categories, though. Like, so you can take it how you want to take it. I wasn't expecting that, Dave. Was not expecting that at all. If you you ask me a question, I'm giving you an answer. All right, you did, you did. But right, but let's uh, let's keep it a buck, though. Realistically, Josh Allen ain't coming here. We need volunteers. He got, he, he got tagged too. Yeah. And I, I wonder if he get tagged as a defensive end or did he get tagged as a linebacker? There's a difference. There's a difference. It's like a $5 million difference. And for those who don't realize, the reason why the Brian Burns was tagged as a linebacker, tagged as a linebacker is because he played more snaps there. Just a reminder for you guys. Because I believe that the defensive end is $19 million, linebacker is 24 So, and he played Carlos more snaps said, there. Carlos said he got tagged as a linebacker. Oh, you did? Good. Yeah. Good All right, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Panther Nation PC, man. Check us out. Shout out to the MVPs. Shout out to the franchise folks. And shout out to the free agents, man. We love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Show would be what it is without your support, man. So we greatly appreciate that. Uh, Dave, real quick, Underdog Fantasy. You guys need to go to underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code PNP when you do. Best ball, best ball, higher lowers. NBA season's in full swing right now. Get an opportunity, and they do discounts for the higher lowers occasionally as well. So once you sign up, you'll get emails or you'll get notifications about some of the discounts coming down the platform. You'll get notifications for sure. So go to underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code PNP when you do. And they've already started doing best ball drafts with the NFL rookies in there. So go in there and get in on the fun. All right, so Dave, I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to go through this quick. Do we want? Do we want to jump into the combine stuff, or wait for a whole other show? I don't want to rush. I got a, a nice little list. I don't want to rush it. How big you of a list you got? It? It's, huh. it's pretty extensive, bro. It's pretty extensive. Uh, you want to try? You want to? You want to do? You want to try to do it? With, you want to do it with G next week? Let's see if I can try to get G on next it's, week. It's up to you. I have a. I have one other Panthers topic. If we want to get to it. Shout out to Carlo. Just sent me a text. I got another Panthers topic. If you want to get to that and close it out, and then we could do the combine stuff later, or I could do a whole nother video about that. Um, what what you trying to do, Dave? I mean, we can hold off. I mean, it doesn't matter. I I, I got time, and no, no business. It's only it's only an hour in. So if you want to go through the combine, so we can go to the Panthers news that you All got. Right, we'll, we'll we'll go through. We'll run it real quick. We'll run it real quick. All right. So here are the guys that we met with. So this is at the combine. You had meetings. Uh, we met with. Uh, some guys and I just wanted a couple takeaways from this uh, you can see that we met with way more offensive guys than we did defensive guys uh, just, <laughs> just to throw that out there uh, shot we did look at some a, a lot of interior defensive linemen so we talked about that I know a lot of people ain't really 
on their on their mock drafts ain't really you know um drafting interior guys like that but we obviously are looking at them because we we brought in three uh for uh, for interviews or we spoke to them uh edge rushers a couple edge rushers but the wide receivers day look at that wide receiver list look at that wide receiver list one seven. two three four seven. five six seven uh, seven wide receivers day and they all early like keon coleman first second round xavier Leggett, second round lad first second round I don't know about the Anaya Smith guy, but Brian Thomas, early first round, uh, Malik Washington, Xavier Worthy, all these guys. Kind of, he's probably maybe second or third, probably worked his way up into maybe even the first, depending on. Uh, he broke how the record, like right? Of the, of the forty, right? He broke, he yeah, he broke the forty record. Yep. So it just depends. It depends. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of wide receivers on this list, and a lot of them guys um, are super, super early. So um, just. Interesting. I mean, just kind of throwing that out there. I know we have been talking about free agency and picking up a guy in free agency, but it appears like all the eggs are in the draft of wide receiver. They're gonna, they're gonna draft a wide receiver. It doesn't matter whether they're gonna draft one in the second or the third, right? I mean, yep. like they're talking like yo, there was folks saying that there's deepest class wide receiver class in a long time. Bro, it's it's deep pause. It's yeah. super deep. Pause. Uh, but anyway. So, Dave, you just talked about it. Uh, Xavier Worthy broke the um, the record, right? So his stock is going crazy right now. I mean, you got folks talking about first round. You know, it's it's a lot. It's I I, I wouldn't go that high for him. Um, there's somebody will though. John Ross does is 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 uh, knocking on that door. Remember him? Mm-hmm. John Ross four two four two two. Not even in the league anymore. Uh, he mm-hmm. says hello, but I'm just just throwing that out there. Uh, but shout out to Xavier Worthy again. He he not only that, he had good numbers elsewhere too. Uh, he had a 41 inch vertical, a 10 uh 10 foot 11 broad jump. So he man, he he definitely elevated his value. Uh and shout out to him, man. Shout out to him. Over uh, over 900 yards as a freshman. Shout out to uh Jared who says that. He's v- very good. Very, very good. Man, Texas had themselves a pair of receivers that were very solid. You know what I mean? So shout out to uh shout out to Worthy. Um he had a had a good um a good uh a good combine. You know what I mean? So I think I do think he's better than Ross. You know what I mean? I do think he's better than Ross. I'm not saying he's going to be Ross. The, que- the question uh, becomes and 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 I've talked to folks who coach in the NFL. Um what they do when they see speeds like this, they go back to the tape and see if it matches. And yeah. they do this, they do the yeah. same thing if, if somebody runs slower than they expect and they look at the tape. So him running a 4-2, here's an example. He ran a 4-2 at the combine. If the tape shows 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, that's not good. Yeah. That's not good. All right. Now, if you somebody like four, like somebody like runs a four. We're gonna six, talk about somebody. We're gonna talk about somebody that did that. And we we got the we got the numbers to back it up. So yeah. hold hold that thought. Okay. Hold that thought, Dave. But yeah, your your point is valid. Okay. Uh, your point is valid. You do you def- there's play speed and straight line speed. Doesn't yep. really matter too much. The straight line speed, it is what it is. You can run fast. So what? How do you play? That's what really that's what really matters. If somebody uh, if they're saying that the tape is the tape showing four two. Yeah, he's four, good. One, he's good. Right. No, he's I'm just, good. I'm just wanted he's to just good. bring that up. He's good. All he's right. good. He's good. Um, but yeah, shout out to Worthy. Um, given you know, a lot of people saying he's a he's a, a skinnier tank deal. Uh, and if that's the case, I'm I'm taking that all day, every day. You know what I mean, so it is what it is there. Uh, but shout out to Worthy, man. I had a very good draft. Uh, uh, excuse me, very good combine, and definitely helped himself out. Definitely helped himself out. Who's right. next? Uh, next up, we got Michael Penix. So y'all know how I feel about Michael Penix. He definitely backed it up. I uh, doesn't have uh, any Raz stuff. I just throw the Raz stuff up there for you know it's s words and giggles. It is what it is there. Obviously, Penix uh, does have a medical history, um, but there was some positive news to report from that standpoint. Um, you know, he's good 6'2", 216, uh, 10 and a half inch hands. Again, really good arm strength, really good accuracy. I obviously put Washington on his back, got him to a national championship, did not win. Uh, but, bro, this Penix, Penix, man, solid. Is his solid. name Penix or Pat? Solid. Is his name Penix or Pat? He doesn't like Coltrane, though. He does. No, the other guy looks like Coltrane. 
Oh, oh, um, Worthy. Worthy looks like Cole Strange. <laughs> he does, man. Yeah. yeah, he does look like Pat. Um, but he says, uh, A Cash says, I guess you could say Xavier is worthy of a, a day one or day two pick. Yeah, it's time. Somebody, to somebody gonna take him in the first round. Yeah, some I think somebody's gonna take a flyer. If you look at if you put him on somewhere like the Chiefs or something, that could be crazy. Uh, you know, some somebody that's got a, a crazy scheme because he's got hands too. Like he's not just all speed. He can he can don't let Mahomes get that man, bro. He don't can let Mahomes get that man, man. Don't let Mahomes get him. All right. Yeah. So we know we're not drafting a quarterback, but we know that already. Yeah, just, I just threw that up there. He had a good day. That's all. You know, lad. Shout out to Lad McConkey. Of course. He he's balling. Um, you know, he again, there's some injury concerns with him as well. But he ha- he ran a fourth, a four three nine, Dave. He ran a four three nine, which is crazy. Uh ran well enough. Um, you know, he's got the tools, he's gonna be a really good receiver. He, he's gonna be solid, bro. He's gonna be very, very good. I think he's gotta bulk up a little bit, um, put some weight on. You know, that weight is a is a, that 186. I think he could pour, afford to put a little bit of weight on. Hopefully he doesn't lose some of that speed, but I definitely, definitely, definitely see him going either late first or early second. And I would not be surprised if the Carolina Panthers took him at 33, especially if they have another pick prior uh, to that pick. You got to have – I like him a lot. He's going to be a very, very reliable receiver, and he's he's fast too. He's fast. I like Ladd a lot. Very, very good, uh, good receiver. Yep, very, very good receiver. Beast in the open field. Dave, any thoughts on Lad? No, I like him, man. I'm impressed by him. Um, it's it's going to be interesting because I know initially when he was talking about Lad, they said he was they they some some folks comped him as a dealer, and I'm like, yeah, so that's going to scare people off. But I, I think the kids. Good. I see that. I th- I think that the the fear for the Panthers, especially to take him, is that you're going to have some duplicate skill set. And I know when when I did my mock draft, a lot of people was like, Nah, we need an X, we need an X because he. He is kind of a slot guy, similar to Thielen, uh, or best fitted. He can't. He, that doesn't mean he cannot play outside. Let me correct myself, because some of y'all gonna jump on me. Pause. That does not mean he can't play outside, but I think he would best fit as an as a slot interior guy. But, um, you know, so we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think you'll find you'll you definitely find a, a role for him, and I think he's gonna be good. Very good wide receiver. He's gonna be. A name that if you're not paying attention, you can be like, man, where does dude come from? You be like, well, yo, where where did he come from? But if you're paying attention, you you're gonna know. You're gonna know. You're gonna know. Jersey, right. Most of his snaps was offside, so that's good. That's good. Yeah, but make I I agree. But most of his 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 snaps from college were outside. That does not necessarily mean he's gonna transition to the NFL that way. No, I would. Completely different. But I yes, the facts are the facts. Yes. Uh, he did play most of his uh, snaps outside of Georgia. I agree. Um, we need to go DT or pass rush with 33. We can't get a wide, we can get a wide receiver in later rounds. Yeah, but can you get a, a game changer in later rounds? Right. Tank Dell was Tank Dell was a late bloomer. Tank Dell was a late round pick. Yeah, yeah. That, but that doesn't mean I think he fell further than he should. Right. That I, that yeah. doesn't mean. You, yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I think Tank should have went. He was. Bro, he was getting mocked higher than what he than what he uh than what well, we he always went. have that. That's the point, right? We always right. have a guy, we always have True. a guy that True. falls. That's just what it is. Um, but you can but if the this and it sounds like that the wide receivers are much deeper in this draft pause than last year's. So if that's the case. Very, very, you could, very deep. You could, pause. you could wait. You could. I don't think folks want to wait. But you could wait and, t- and get and Tank, somebody yeah, off that might potentially fall. Tank was in the third round too, so let's not act like he was a seventh round pick. That's what no, y'all no, no. About. But my point is, we don't necessarily have to take a wide receiver with the first. If we end up with, if our first pick ends up being thirty third, we don't necessarily have to take one at thirty three. We take something else because maybe an elite pass rusher falls at thirty three because of everybody going crazy at wide receiver, or maybe you have um one of the best offensive linemen in the draft that falls to thirty three. You yeah, know what you I'm saying? Know. So then you, you take one know. of those guys and then you get your wide receiver in the third round. That's my point. If the position right. is as deep as everybody's saying. You know, you never know. And it, it's always going to boil down to, I think, uh, what's his name? Um, Dan Morgan already said it. If it's going to go down to need and if, uh, or it's going to come down to BPA, but 
it's if all things are equal, it's gonna go down to need. So yep. it, it just depends. It just depends. Um Black Ball Enterprises, you can get Malik Washington earlier on in the fourth. I mean, we won't we won't know until we won't know until, until the that day happens. Yeah, going, I mean, we man. won't know. Yeah, we could do that in a mock draft, but in real life, real life is different, bro. Much the mock different. draft never go. The mock draft never goes what we think is gonna go. It might go in the first round, but after that, it gets ugly. Another Texas yep. wide receiver. Another Texas wide receiver, Adonai Mitchell, who a lot of y'all like over Lad. Uh, I I know because y'all let me know about it in in my mock draft. But another guy, man. Again. We didn't really question his speed, obviously, because of the film. He backed that up uh, with with a nice four three four. Um, but again, it, it, like, bro, it's the forty yard the forty yard that it's the it's the size, the athleticism. Look at the the nine nine eight Raz. I mean, if you're if you're into Raz scores, bro, it's every he checked all the boxes. He checked all the boxes, bro. And I I do think he's still probably gonna be a day two guy. And if he's sitting there at thirty three. He's another one, another one you really got to consider. His film is solid, 6'2", 205. He's got it. He's like the total package, bro. Very solid wide receiver, man. So I would not be mad at 33. He's sitting there. I wouldn't be mad if we talk, if we uh, we picked him up. And if he goes in the first, I could see that happening too. Yeah. I could see, I could see him going in the first. I could see a lot of wide receivers going in the first, which means a lot of those guys, if there's a run on wide receivers – I can see a lot of wide receivers that you thought were going to be in the third. Those late wide receivers you just talked about, Dave. If there's a run, then some of those guys won't be there. People are going to start panicking. Oh. So it is what it is. But it yep, is. shout out to uh, shout out to AD man. Very very good player. Very very good player. Um, Peyton Wilson, man, another yo. Peyton Wilson was a Dog. is a baller. He is a baller, and he had a very very, very good combine, man. Very good combine. Um, he's a playmaker. If you turn on the tape, he's right there. The only issue with him was health concerns. Uh, and th- that's the only reason why he isn't higher up on the boards is because of those health issues. Uh, but you, you go at the combine, you start to dim those whispers of medical history. And, uh, yeah, Peyton, Peyton had himself a day, bro. He had himself a day. Um you know, so shout out to him, man. Shout out to Peyton Wilson. I think he definitely solidified himself as one of the top guy, top linebackers. And I think if somebody's willing to look past that injury history and and get the all clear on that, he's gonna go high, bro. It's gonna go high. Yeah, I think he's probably a day one pick, first round pick for sure. Especially after the combine he just had. I don't know about first. Really? I don't. I don't know about first. I think he's gonna go. I just think the medical. It just depends on the medical, bro. It depends on the medical, man. If the medical comes back good, maybe. But I I, I see him as a a, a second. Second. And he, and, he, and he still got his pro day, too. So there's that. Still got a pro day. Still got a pro day. So. Still got a pro day. All right. Um, that's that is Peyton Wilson. Shout out to Peyton Wilson. Uh Braden Fisk. Yeah, I know I've been talking oh my about Braden God, for a minute. bro. Had himself a day, bro. My man, my yo, man. That man ran a four seven eight at almost 300 pounds, bro. Yes. Like I don't think folks understand how fast that is. Like I know we always about the four threes and four fours, but dog, 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 under a four eight, almost weigh three hundred pounds. Six four two ninety two. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, and I've, I've I've watched him as a Florida State fan. I've watched him red games again. One of his best uh his best game tape is against Louisville. Destroy, yo, he single handedly destroyed Louisville himself. Like he had himself a day in that game. Um, and yeah, he's gonna be a monster. He's gonna be a monster, bro. I definitely think he's improving his value. Uh, every time he touches the field this offseason, it's getting better, whether it be the senior bowl, now the combine, then it's gonna be the pro day. His stock is up, 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 and out of here, bro. He's about to be out of here. Yeah, um, he ain't gonna be there at 33. Yeah, he has he has no like you like Dave said. He had no business putting up the numbers he put up. It being as big as he is, pause. Um, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I he's saw his forty. I said, "Oh, yeah, game record, game record, bro. Yeah, game record." So shout out to uh, Braden Fisk against Go Knows. Uh, last one, Chop Robinson. I think that's my last one. Chop Robinson uh, out of Penn State, edge rusher. Uh, this is a guy that I mocked on my mock draft uh, Monday, the live edition. 
Um, I think if you're looking at edge rusher and something happens to to Brian Burns and we happen to 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 you know let him go to another team, then you got to have your eye on Chop. Uh, Chop can be had in the second round right now. May I don't know if he's going to work his way back in the first. But if you look at that 1.5, 10-yard split, that's the fastest ever, fastest ever for an edge rusher over 250 pounds. And the splits is what matters, bro. So it's crazy. That split is, is – is, 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 he's fast. The film shows it. I've seen him wreck some games too. Um, the, the sack production isn't quite there. So, it, again, you go, you go back to – to some of that stuff, it's a valid concern. The pat, the pass rush skill set, and the speed is there. Can it be coached? Maybe. Um, that that soon that we don't know, we don't know. But his you, his his sack numbers give much uh, to be desired. Pause. But does he get pressures? Does he get everything else? Does he? I, the I don't know. His, I don't know his pressure numbers to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> he, he has he has what you call the intangibles, Dave. You have to get the coaches to get it out of him. That's that he, but his intangibles are are there. You know, the could he add? Could he get? He can't. He ain't gonna get much. Talk. Six two. We've seen six two edge rushers before. Charles Johnson, I believe, was six. Fuck, if I'm, I could be way wrong on that. But I think Charles Johnson was. Let me. Now you gotta have me checking. Yeah, I gotta look that up. Yeah, I'm looking up right now. Yeah, look that one up. I believe Charles, Charles, Johnson, Charles was, Johnson was 6'2. Yeah, that's what I thought. Charles but, he Johnson, did, but he weighed more, he weighed way more than 254. Did he weigh 254 coming out of college? No, I don't what know. He, what he what he was he, I don't, I don't know. Gotta, what he actually, actually, yeah. 270. He weighed 270. It's not too bad. He can put on some weight. Put on some weight. Um, put it in perspective, he ran a 4740. Charles Johnson did. To, to give you some perspective. And my yeah, man, this man ran a sub four, sub four five. His split though was one point uh, five eight though, so he, so so CJ split what I'm was saying. CJ split was different, bro. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. If you, if you, if you can coach it out of him, maybe you can get some some um, big money uh, production out of him. We don't know though. We don't know. Um, was it? oh Eddie uh, Eddie Parsons says Parsons fifty option contract signed de not linebacker saving him three million. Any thoughts? I know his agent probably wants the, a new contract ASAP. Yeah, I didn't know that. I I don't. I have to look into that. I don't know much about Parsons. Um, and I don't yeah. know about anything Dallas about his. Uh, Dallas got to steal there. That's the case because he definitely, definitely more of a linebacker. Yeah, but again, I think it goes. What I think what you said earlier it goes to where you played your snaps. But the thing um, is, it all depends on how they. It might be how they drafted him because the fifth year option is the fifth year option. I don't know. You know, if they draft him as, a, as an end, that's why he got the fifth year option as an yeah, end. Yeah, I don't now, know. Now, when that he gets works. tagged, it'll be different. Tag, it'll be based on the snaps. You're right. I misspoke. My apologies. Yeah. But this is my based apologies. on the fifth year option. So if he signed as a D from the gate, that's a different ball game. But yeah, shout out to Chop. Shout out yep. to Chop. Chop, again, Chop is it's a dope name, too. Mm-hmm. Chop, shout out to Chop Robbins. All right, stock downs. We'll get through these quick because I got to get up out of here. Um, one second. Tavondre Sweat. Yeah, Tavondre Sweat. Again, he is a a monster. Uh, he draw comparisons to uh, Jordan Davis. Remember Jordan Davis last year, Mo- massive human being. Um, you know, and Jordan Davis had a four seven eight. Not so much here, bro. Not so much here from uh, Tavondre Sweat. Um, he's a big guy. Uh, he's commendable athleticism. Uh, but yeah. The, that that forty yard dash again for interior defense line. You're not really too concerned I don't know about you care that. About a split. Yeah, the splits are more important. Um, the you know, I don't know, man. It, it's just three sixty six. Yeah, he's a big, a big dude, boy. and that, that's the concerning too. He did drop some weight, I believe, from the senior ball. I think he 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 weighed more uh, than that. If I'm not, he, or he weighed somewhere, and it was like he was expected to be to weigh more. So he's starting to come down a little bit, but. Um, He's he's a big guy. Uh, he's got some productivity. Uh, if you turn on this film, he's productive. Uh, but you know, it just it, the athleticism it, is the athleticism going to be enough? We don't know. So he gets stocked down uh, for that. Okay. Uh, same for Austin Booker. Austin Booker 
um, the, the the edge rusher out of um, Kansas. Of Kansas, he had 505 career snaps and started just one collegiate game. Dave, oh, okay, no. he's a sleeper. He's a sleeper guy. He's a sleeper guy. Uh, it was perceived that he had a lot of athleticism, right? That's why they. That's why he he got the combine invite. He, he they, they the perception was that he was very athletic. Got out there and was very disappointing. Very disappointing. I let a lot of people down from a uh from a from a athleticism standpoint. Weighs 240 pounds, but he does it doesn't look like he's gonna be ready anytime soon to make a real impact in the NFL. Um, you know, the 40 yard dash, four uh four seven nine, that's average. Vertical jump was subpar. Um, the overall athleticism score for edge rushes was just kind of eh. But yeah, I don't know, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know. We... If he I only had about... one start, bro, I can't. But you know, he, he got the he got the um the snaps, just the, the starts is a th- is a different thing. But oh, okay. It may, it's the you know, he, he's a he is a a uh, a ball of clay. You gotta coach him up. But the again, the uh perception that was he he was gonna be a lot more athletic than what he was, and the the, the numbers just weren't good. Hopefully he does better his pro day. Hopefully his pro day is much better. And he'll get some of that home cooking. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this goes and what and where he is up. Like what's his draft grade right now? Uh I you could get him in like the third or fourth, the third or fourth right now. Um, probably the third. But you know, I, I don't see I see that falling a little bit if you can't, you know what I mean? If you can't, you can't get that done. And he's gotta have a good a good pro day. So and I know this was gonna surprise a lot of y'all. My man Keon Coleman did not perform that well at the combine. Well, at the forty. At the forty, a four six one. No bueno. No bueno. You want to know some people that have forty uh forty yard dashes in that range, Dave? Sure, Devin right. Funches. Devin Funches, our good friend Devin Funches, Arden Tate. Ran a four six eight. Laquan, Laquan Treadwell, four six four. Brandon Lloyd, four six two. Yeah, you know I mean, so I like this, Dave. I like the fact that he's on stock down because you know what? That gives us a better opportunity. If if it's if it's the truth that teams are kind of nah, I'm not really feeling this forty time. I think I want to drop them. Then I got news for you. You're making a huge mistake, Keon. You spoke about it earlier, Dave. Keon has what we call game speed, Dave. He has well, game they're gonna speed. look at the tape. They're gonna look at the tape. If you look at the tape, he got speed, bro. He got speed. Let me tell you. Let me show you some stats, Dave. It, despite running a four six, Dave, he actually put up the second highest, tied the second highest go route speed, Dave, in the group. So <laughs> how do you run a four a four Whatever a four six, but you got the second highest go route speed, Dave. When he ran the gauntlet, they said he was putting up numbers. You know what I mean? So, bro, don't I hope I'm I, I put this on here to be funny, right? I put him on stock down to be funny because I hope I'm I'm putting some propaganda out there. To, I hope other teams are watching and they be like, man, this dude, this dude, Trad, man, he sucks. We just watching the highlights from PNP and just saw the stock down. And we now we don't want Keon Coleman. But bro, Keon Coleman is a baller. Okay. He's a straight up baller, and you're gonna want him on your team. You're gonna want him on your team. Yep. So and I I still want Keon Coleman despite the four. This is the 40 times straight line speed that does nothing for me. What are you doing on on on, on game tape and Keon Coleman? He's a baller. I've seen it with my own two eyes. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Jeremiah Trotter, Clemson guy. Okay. Mm, he's, he came in a little smaller, six foot, 228 for a linebacker. That ain't it. That ain't it. That's not what you're looking for for a, a linebacker. Um, doesn't have the length, pause. You know, the, the expectations were he's going to be a little, he's going to be a great athlete given those stature numbers, right? Given the six foot, you got to make that up somewhere. But the performance was a little mid. 
results 7.73 in the cone drill, 7.13 in the uh in the cone drill and a 4.4 in the 20 yard shuttle shuffle a shuttle excuse me not good not good not good so trotter probably gonna see his stock tumble a little bit um i know i drafted in my mock draft i think i i was i wanted to get him in my, my mock draft that i did on uh on um on Monday, but uh, I think I got him in my second one, not my first one. But yeah, man, uh, six foot, two twenty eight. Yeah, I don't good. know, bro. I don't know. Not to say he won't be good. Not to say he won't be good, but that's that ain't. Mm. He's gonna have to get some weight up. He gonna get his weight up a bit. Kalen King, I believe he's my last stock down. Kalen King. Uh, Penn State guy, uh, some pegged him, you know, had him pretty high on their list, uh, you know, but yeah, I think he had to get some words of encouragement uh, for some other guys. I think like CGJ had to write him, write him some words of encouragement because uh, he, he didn't perform well. Four six one forty, not that's that's a, a red flag for a cornerback, bro. Four six four six one is tough. I mean, can't, and his, his that's, twenty yard split wasn't good either. It's tough, bro. That's tough. That is tough. Uh, I don't know, bro. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a, a. His stock is gonna take a real, real drop. Speaking of speed, bro, I, I should have every running back up here because all the running backs were slow. Like, yo, we had we had <laughs> rushers, we had edge rushers and interior defensive line running faster than the running backs, bro. My man said, "Looks like my man looked like said, look like he need to get a CDL." That is funny. That is funny, Nolan. That is funny. <laughs> or play a different position. That's funny. Yeah, that that. But he can't. I mean, he's five. He's five eleven. Only weighs a buck ninety one. I need to transition to safety or something. That 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 four. That he ain't four, big six, enough one. to take hits. He ain't big enough to hit folks. That four six one, bro. That's that's tough. That's tough, bro. Especially for a guy that was almost he was borderline top ten. Borderline top ten in the position. He's got potential. He's got potential, but there's some there's some red flags, bro. There's some definitely some red flags. Uh, my man, my man, Noli said this RB class is trash. Yeah, the RB class is definitely mid. They're they're slow. I, even my, even my man Braylon Allen decided not to run. He didn't even run in the forty. So that's crazy. It's, it's a lot of these running backs, man. It's it's mid out here. So this is what I got, man. Who else did y'all? This is for my that's my stock up, stock down. For I went through it quick. I want to spend some more time on breaking these guys down. So my apologies. Uh I had the for the second week in a row, I had to adjust the 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 topics just because all the news kept coming in for the Panthers. So uh my apologies. I kind of re- went through this really quick. Uh, but any anybody else that I missed that y'all like before we hang it up? What was the Panthers news you had? Oh, uh Carlo has sent me some news that uh, the Carolina Panthers added a new member to the coaching staff. D- Dean Petsing was hired at a, as the offensive quality co- control coach. Uh, he spent the past two seasons at LSU as the lead op- offensive uh, analyst, quarterbacks analyst, and worked with Notre Dame as a grad assistant and analyst before that. His brother, Drew, is the offensive coordinator. Uh, for the Arizona Cardinals, and that is according to Mike K. Shout out to Mike K. Once again uh, for that news. So, okay. so yeah, Leggett, Leggett had a good day. Yes, uh, definitely had a good day bouncing back from the pro day, who was kind of mid. Um, yeah, Leggett had himself a day. Pearsall definitely had himself a day too. Good. That's some some good points. Good points. Blake Corum, twenty-seven reps on the on the bench. Yeah, he's stout. He's he's stout. I, I like Corum a lot. All right. I like Corum a lot. All right. Any other uh, comments before we get up out of here? Nah, man. This was a good show, man. We got through everybody. I'm gonna we're gonna shoot to have my boy G, who who's a scout. He breaks down. Um, Draft picks. He primarily focused on HBCU players, but he actually had to do. He actually had to do scout for the Sun Belt too. So uh, we'll we'll try to get him here next week. 
And maybe we can talk to some of some of these players. He he can break it down with the best of them. He should be in the NFL if you keep it a buck. That's a whole different discussion. But yeah, so we'll we're gonna shoot to see if we can get him in here next week. All right, with that said, man, we're gonna close this thing out. This is a fun show. 600 people in here. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button while you're here. Notific- notification bell, get in the comments, all that stuff, man. It's good stuff. It's picking up. Draft season is upon us. Uh, I will try if I have some time. I won't be this weekend, but I'll try to get some prospect videos out. Um, it's a lot going on. I got to get through April. Once I get through April, that's when it's going to pick up for me and I have some more time. But right now, it's tough. Tough sledding for your boy. You got to tell right. me. Uh, so with that said, uh, again, like, subscribe, notification bell. We're going to holler at y'all on the next show. We out of here. Peace.